You don't think you make a good astronaut? I discovered my world. I have my own planet. I don't need to discover other planets. This is my planet. This is my world. An entertainer, a beast on the pitch, a man of big fights, but also a man with an incredibly good heart. Zlatan's story is the story of a legend who overcame a tough background to build an eternal legacy. So gather around because you're about to understand why Ibrahimovic will forever be the king of football. Zlatan Ibrahimovic has always been a proud Swede, but since he was a kid, he had to cope with racism and prejudice due to his background. Son to a Bosnian father and a Croatian mother, Ibra was often treated as an immigrant in his native country. That skinny kid alongside his four siblings had to spend his childhood in the immigrant-populated, dangerous neighborhood of Rosengarb. Widely bullied because of the size of his nose or his foreign origins, Ibrahimovic also spoke with a lisp. Eventually, the school hired a special teacher to work with him individually, which added an enormous dose of humiliation. Now keep this in mind because we'll get back to that teacher later on. Ibra, who would later admit that he attended classes only to receive free lunches, was receiving more hits than he could bear. And as if that wasn't enough torment for a little boy, the domestic problems were there too, as his parents divorced when Zlatan was just two years old after a series of violent episodes, child neglect and abuse. Haunted by the memories of the Balkan War, Sefik Ibrahimovic, Zlatan's dad, was a hard-drinking man, and shortly after Ibra was born, his marriage was over. The Swede would later reveal that his father could not easily shake the images of his village in Bosnia being brutalized by Serbian forces, which forced them out of the country. Still, Zlatan had a stronger bond with him than his mum, so when his father left the house, Zlatan just couldn't take it anymore. After a short period of time, Ibra went to live with his dad, who literally gave his son everything. Zlatan got emotional as he remembered those days and Safik's efforts to provide for his family. Like the time he brought his son a bed in Ikea, but couldn't afford the delivery charges. We carried it home between us. It's fantastic what we did. I had time with my mother, but I really lived with my father. One time he gave all his salary so I could travel to a training camp. He couldn't pay the rent, but he did that. But the sporadic good times weren't enough to transform Zlatan's childhood into a happy one. Instead, what the Swedish prodigy needed was to discover his passion for football. Remember earlier on we talked about the teacher assigned specifically to accompany Zlatan and the humiliation that this implied? Well, that event led that little, skinny, teased kid to understand just how big his potential was. When the teacher came out to watch him play football one afternoon, Ibra seized the opportunity and lined a long-distance shot off her head. Cold Zlatan. Cold. <laughs> the woman quit her job after the incident and Zlatan learned a valuable lesson. As long as he had the ball, the world would be at his feet. I wanted to stand up to the whole world and show everybody who doubted me who I really was. And I couldn't imagine anyone who'd be able to stop me. Wait, don't try this with your teachers. It worked for Zlatan, but you know, there was and only ever will be one Zlatan. There's only one Zlatan. After that incident, Ibra changed his mindset forever. And if you thought that this arrogant, trash-talking style appeared when he became a pro, you couldn't be more wrong. I always tried to play it cocky like that. It's something that has stayed with me since I was little. You couldn't show any weakness. His love for the game combined with his neighborhood toughness and the fact that he idolized Brazilian players like Ronaldo instead of Swedish ballers shaped his uncanny showmanship style. His self-confidence grew and soon enough Ibra joined the Malmo Academy. As we said, Zlatan's journey to become a pro wasn't easy at all. Always in pursuance of perfection, Ibrahimovic used to get mad at himself when he couldn't be the game changer. The year was 1996 and he thought of abandoning his football dream for good. So why didn't he do it? Well, it was partially thanks to Malmo's youth coach, Johnny Helenzo. He was not so keen to play football anymore. I think he really liked to score some goals and he couldn't do it and this was a problem for him. We could talk to each other and we had great respect for each other and he started to move on in Malmo and play in the team. And so we are glad that we have a little bit of an influence in his career. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts, Johnny. You saved the world from missing a true legend of the game. It took another three years for teenage Zlatan to make it into the first team and when he accomplished his dream, an old problem resurfaced. 
A zebra once again was a victim of racism by his own teammates. When I first arrived in Malmo, I was not accepted by my teammates and by the environment because I had a foreign name. I was not a starter, I came off the bench, but I was still not welcome or accepted. Then a coach named Roland Anderson came and I finally found a person who believed in me. So I took the chance I was given and I came to dominate completely. Malmo got relegated in Zlatan's first season as a pro, although Ibra had little participation. As many players left due to relegation, the striker's role increased and took Malmo back to the first division within a year, being the team's top scorer. Half a season back in the top tier Swedish league was enough for international scouts to understand that Zlatan was meant to achieve greatness. Ibra was just 19 years old when Ajax paid $8 million to sign him. It doesn't look like much nowadays, but back then, it was a huge amount of money for a guy who had only played a few games in Sweden's first division. In fact, it was a record fee paid by Ajax at the time. So imagine the pressure that young Zlatan had upon his arrival. It was his first journey abroad, so his adaptation to living in Amsterdam was not particularly quick. And this became more evident when the media tagged him pretty much as a punk due to early exonerations of reckless driving in Sweden. But the Wonder Kids soon started to prove them wrong, as he scored a goal and an assist in his first derby against Feyenoord, plus a couple of goals in the UEFA Cup too. But as his tag of troublemaker was starting to fade away, the off-field problems appeared. Zlatan's inability to quickly settle into the city, plus the language barrier played a role in his inconsistent form, which earned him several haters among the Ajax fans. In a few months, Ibra went from being the club's biggest prospect to asking to leave the club on load. But as the Swede hoped for a change, the club hired a new coach that would change his journey with the Dutch giants, Ronald Koeman. The new coach would give Ibrahimovic a more important role within the team, and Zlatan wouldn't disappoint. The Swede would score a goal and provide two assists in the league title winning game against Sparta Rotterdam, and scored in the Dutch Cup final as well. A couple of domestic titles in his first season earned Zlatan a name in Europe. He would play two more years with the Dutch side in which he'd win another league plus the Super Cup. It was clear that the Eredivisie was no longer a challenge for him and Juventus would soon sign him. Zlatan was already too big for the Dutch league. But in his farewell game against NAC Breda, Zlatan scored arguably the best goal of his career. Yup, you know which goal we're talking about guys. In a moment of pure brilliance, Ibrahimovic would torment half their opponents with cutbacks, feints, several mazy dribbles, and in the end, a simple finish to complete his work of art. Zlatan's masterpiece was chosen as the 2004 Goal of the Year by Eurosport. And if the Puskas Award had existed back then, we're sure he would have won it. Ibra would finally win the Puskas Award nine years later, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. There's still a lot more to tell about the King's journey, which was about to reach new heights. Before we move on to the next chapter, guys, a tiny little thing. Remember to subscribe to our channel. You'll be able to see more cool content and nice football stories about the best players in the world or the greatest legends like in this video. Anyways, what are you waiting for, guys? Come on, come on, hit that like button and subscribe. Okay, back to business. Juventus finally signed Ibrahimovic for $20 million by a special request from the coach Fabio Capello. The Italian knew that the Swede could be the next great thing and revealed how he could improve Zlatan's goal-scoring range. When I moved to Juventus, I immediately asked the club to sign him. He had the same technical skills as Van Basten, and I made him watch some videos of him to improve his finishing. Ibra got it straight away. I think the results are out there to prove it. Thanks to Capello's influence, Ibra scored 16 goals in his first Serie A campaign and played a big part in Juventus' way to the title. The Swede would obtain back-to-back -back Scudettos in his two-year spell with the old lady, but his journey as a Bianconero was marked by two other aspects. Firstly, his constant fights with the rival defenders such as Milan's Jap Stam, Inter's Sinisha Mihailovic, and Messina's Carmina Capola, who dared to put his hand on Zlatan's throat. Oh boy, we guess he wasn't aware of Ibra's martial arts abilities. But secondly, and most importantly, the event that changed his career in Italy was the Calciopoli, the scandal in which Juventus got involved for fixing games and paying off referees. As a consequence, the old lady got stripped of their league titles and relegated to the Serie B. As that way Zlatan found himself in an unexpected dead end, but he was convinced that staying in Turin wasn't an option. Instead, he decided to join another Serie A giant, Inter. Already considered a world-class striker, the Swede signed a pretty nice contract 
that put him among the best paid footballers in Italy. Ibrahimovic's relationship with the Milanese side was a love-hate one. His performances in the Serie A were incredible, making him the deadliest threat in the tournament and winning every single Scudetto. In the 2007-8 campaign, the Nerazzurri needed a victory in the last game against Parma to secure the title. Ibra was not fit to start, so the coach Roberto Mancini kept him on the bench. The Swede came on in the last 30 minutes and broke the deadlock with an epic brace that gave into their second title in a row. A year later, he became the Serie A top scorer and once again lifted the biggest trophy in Italy. But surprisingly enough, the fans didn't love him as you would think. Used to seeing City rivals Milan winning the Champions League, Inter just couldn't achieve international success. And Zlatan couldn't change that. In his third season with the team and under Jose Mourinho, he clashed with his own fans. Inter were already out of the UCL and the Italian Cup, so the fans were not happy with the team. The Nerazzurri were facing Lazio when Ibra scored and chose to celebrate by making a brutal gesture towards the Nerazzurri fans. Ah, Zlatan just cannot help provoking, can he? And I can do whatever the f I want. His silence gesture was the straw that broke the camel's back. Even though he had taken Inter to the top of the domestic league, Zlatan knew that he had to leave. Still, his journey with the Nerazzurri had been truly successful in terms of silverware. If it wasn't for the Calciopoli scandal, Ibra's resume would say that he won five consecutive league titles in Italy, two with Juventus and three with Inter. He had conquered the Serie A, but the Lion was still hungry. He felt the need of a change to pursue his biggest dream, the Champions League trophy. Zlatan pulled arguably the worst manoeuvre you could make to Mourinho. He left his team and joined Pep Guardiola's. The special one admitted that he was angry for having lost the Swede, but there was no looking back for Ibra. After the historical 2009 treble, Guardiola was looking for a striker to replace Cameroon's GOAT, Samuel Eto'o. It was a win-win situation. Barcelona would sign one of the best players in the world, and Zlatan would have his best chance to win the Champions League. But things turned out the exact opposite. Ibrahimovic only lasted one year with the Blaugrana, in which he had a big participation. But without a doubt, his spell at Barcelona will be remembered for his fallout with Pep Guardiola. Since day one, Pep and Zlatan didn't look like the most obvious couple. Plus, Ibra had a different style of play than the tiki-taka that took Barcelona to the next level. But on the pitch, things started quite well. I mean, really well. The Swede scored 11 goals in his first 14 games. That's a Haalandish goal-scoring average. But still, the coach was not happy with Ibra's overall contribution to the team. Meanwhile, Lionel Messi kept scoring prolifically, and the Argentine wanted to play as a centre-forward. This led to Pep granting Leo's wish, and by the consequence, Zlatan's role within the team was diminished. By that point, as we discovered years later, Ibrahimovic and Guardiola wouldn't even speak to each other. Just picture it, grown men seeing each other day after day and not even greeting each other. Some say that they didn't talk because Ibra was angry about losing his place in the team. Others say that it was a tactic from the coach to show Zlatan the way out. The truth is only known by them, but the Swedish marvel didn't hold his tongue after leaving the club. If you have a problem with me, it's up to you to solve your problem. You are the leader. You are the coach. You can't have a good dialogue with 20 people and then with the 21st, you look away. That's always been Pep's problem. No argument. Tactically, he's probably the best. But he's been often criticised for the way he deals with his players. When he counts on a player, he has a great relationship with him. But when a player is not really in his tactical scheme, he completely ignores him. Ibrahimovic's last six months at Barcelona were a nightmare, and his frustration was so big that it took him to throwing a box of training gear across the dressing room. We're not joking, guys. That actually happened. Okay, you two in the conference room with me. Nobody leaves until we work this out. It was evident that the relationship had reached a point of no return. Meanwhile, the Catalans lost to Inter in the Champions League semi-finals, and his former club ended up lifting the trophy. He left Inter to win the UCL with Barcelona, and things turned the other way around completely. Asked about this, Mourinho assured that Ibra's departure played a key role to change the team's mindset. My assistants were shattered. I was worried, but at the end I told him, maybe you leave us and we end up winning the Champions League. It was crazy, but the atmosphere in the dressing room changed. Ibrahimovic's journey in Spain was over, and after he revealed his fallout with Guardiola, the coach confirmed that they had almost no contact while working together. If Ibra and I have spoken only twice in six months, there is a reason. But it is better for the club if I don't talk about it. But in spite of all these problems, Ibrahimovic did achieve some milestones with the Blaugrana shirt. 
He won his first two international trophies and became club world champion, plus a domestic league title in which he played a key role, especially in the first half of the season. Now I feel better. That being said, the Swede was facing an unexpected bump in his career. But as some people started to think the Lions' best days were over, the king returned back to his kingdom. As the world-class baller that he was, Zlatan had a few options to pick his next destination, and he chose to return to Italy, where he became the king. Praised at Juventus and adored at Inter despite his fallout with the fans, the Lion took one of the most Zlatan-like decisions of his life and joined AC Milan. The Swede chose to complete the treble and play in Italy's top three giants, despite knowing that this move would put an end to his relationship with the Nerazzurri fans. But a king never worries about what others may think, so he accepted one of the biggest challenges of his career, and the Lion proved that his best days were still ahead of him. If he had been great at Inter, his first spell at AC Milan was incredible. An unstoppable Zlatan led the team to its first Scudetto in seven years. Keep in mind that they competed against Inter, who were the European champions back then. Now, let's see if you were paying attention, dear viewers. How many consecutive league titles had Ibra won at that moment? If you take into account the two league titles that Ibra won with Juventus before the Calciopoli scandal, the Swede had won every single league title he played since 2004. One with Ajax, another one at Barcelona, and six Scudettos between the old lady, Inter and Milan. He had the world at his feet. In his two-year journey at Milan, Zlatan also became the Serie A top scorer for the second time. Ibrahimovic scored 56 goals in 85 appearances for Milan and was considered by many as the best striker in the world. That is, if you don't take into account the two aliens that were playing for Real Madrid and Barcelona in those days. Anyways, having made history in Italy once again, the new rich kid on the block suddenly went for him. PSG targeted Zlatan as the star that could take the club firstly to become France's number one team, and secondly, to the European crown. QSI had become PSG's sole owner just three months before, and they convinced Ibra to try and conquer yet another territory. A 30-year-old Zlatan agreed to sign a three-year deal and revolutionize the French capital. A spectacularly talented serial trophy winner with an ego to match, Ibrahimovic was the first superstar signing of PSG's new era. And Zlatan needed no time to adapt, as he scored twice in his first league and game, and in the following years, Ibra truly changed PSG's history. Before his arrival, the Parisians had only won two league titles, but during his four-year spell with them, Zlatan won all four league trophies. But his influence went way beyond the football pitch. Le meilleur joueur avec lequel j'ai joué, il y en a beaucoup. Le plus symbolique, ça reste quand même Zlatan, parce que c'est un être à part, aussi bien humainement que sportivement. Et puis il a fait progresser le club. On a réussi à, à gagner des titres en partie grâce à lui, même s'il y avait tout un collectif autour. Mais c'était la pièce maîtresse quand même. Je pense que son but contre Bastia ou même celui euh, au Vélodrome, dans un gros choc au MPSG, mettre euh, une espèce de d'aile de pigeon comme ça au Vélodrome, il a fait éteindre de, tout le stade, donc c'était magnifique. In the meantime, he won the Pushkas Award for the best goal of 2012 thanks to his unforgettable bicycle kick against England. He just couldn't stop making history. His legacy grew even more when he became PSG's all-time top scorer with 156 goals. Ibra easily passed previous leader Paleta, just how great you must be to become a club's top all-time goal scorer after only four years at the club. But that's Zlatan, a man used to making the impossible possible. In his farewell tweet, Ibra described his importance in Paris the best possible way. I came like a king, I left like a legend. We respectfully disagree with you, Zlatan. You were already a legend when you arrived to PSG. He finally left Paris in 2016, and even though a little French kid looking like a Ninja Turtle has now surpassed him as the PSG all-time top scorer, PSG will never forget Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Now, before we talk about Zlatan's spell at Manchester United, I wanted to share this video with you guys because it shows who Zlatan is. Look at how he intervenes to stop an injustice. It reminds me of another incredible Zlatan video.
We've told you about Zlatan's past, being bullied, being a victim of racism as a kid, as a young player, and even today. It made him stronger, indestructible on the pitch, but it also made him a man that fought against injustice out of the pitch. And that's why we love him so much. But let's get back to his crazy journey. Settling a long past due, the Premier League finally had Zlatan among their stars. Did he choose Chelsea or City, the two dominant teams at the time? Not at all. That wouldn't be much of a challenge for him. Ibra signed for Manchester United as a free agent, with the enormous goal of bringing silverware back to the Red Devils trophy cabinet. Zlatan himself announced his arrival, and years later he would reveal that he ruined a $5 million deal to announce him through the club's official accounts. What do you mean? <laughs> What do, you, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? He can't make these things up. But if someone got mad at him for that, they would quickly forget it as they had a great season. He scored the title winning goal in the Community Shield. He became the oldest player to reach 15 Premier League goals in one season. But as amazing as he was, two events ruined what looked like a perfect year for him. Ibra was punished with a three match suspension following an elbow incident during a game against Bournemouth. And a month later, in the Europa League quarterfinals, Zlatan suffered a serious knee injury that would keep him out of the pitch for the remainder of the season. Even Lions can be taken down sometimes. The Swede would return in November, seven months after the injury, but his role in the team was not the same. And he wasn't happy with the way the club treated him too. Ibra revealed that one time he took a fruit juice from the hotel's minibar while waiting for a game with the team, and the club took a pound off his salary. I was surprised by the small mentality of the club. Among the little things that grinded his gears, the former Juventus striker assured that he was asked for his papers to let him enter the training ground every single morning. <laughs> I'd lower my window and say to the person at the gate, listen my friend, I've been coming here every day for a month. I'm the best player in the world. I am Zlatan. There's only one Zlatan. If you still don't recognize me, you're in the wrong job. A few challenging months went by until in March 2018, United had announced that Zlatan had agreed to end the deal. With the Red Devils, Ibra won the League Cup and the Community Shield, plus his third and last international trophy, the Europa League. It may not sound that great for a legend like Zlatan and for a club as big as Manchester United, but it was their best year since Alex Ferguson's departure. Meanwhile, an unexpected hate wave towards Zlatan arised from his native country. Yes, Ibrahimovic purchased a huge stock of shares in Hammerby, one of the Stockholm-based clubs. This was seen as an act of treason by the Malmö fans, who vandalized and set Ibra's statue on fire. With several racial insults, which we won't reproduce, the Malmo supporters went from idolizing Zlatan to considering him persona non grata. Perhaps that's why Ibra decided to literally take a break from Europe. Bye, have a great time. The 36-year-old Zlatan, still not fully fit after his injury, signed with Los Angeles Galaxy in the United States. His announcement was as epic as Michael Jordan's I'm back statement. Get this right, he paid a full page ad in the LA Times with the message, Dear Los Angeles, you're welcome. Logically, Ibra followed other stars' steps and instantly became the MLS's biggest star. Still, due to his age and the recent knee injury, many thought that the LA Galaxy would be the last we'd see of Zlatan on the field. But once again, the King proved them wrong. Because even though it was the only team with which he didn't win a title, Zlatan left with unforgettable memories of his time in the MLS. His debut was arguably one of the most memorable in football history. Ibra came into the field of play for the last 30 minutes of the Los Angeles derby against LAFC. The Galaxy were down by a goal, but the Swede took care of it as he tied the game with a 41 meter volley. A goal which was chosen as the best of the year in the MLS, by the way. And then he scored the winning goal in stoppage time. I heard the crowd saying, we want Zlatan, so I gave them Zlatan, he said with his uncanny smile. Ibra was being praised in the highest possible regard, but he felt like the USA didn't have a league worthy of him. So if United needs me, I'm here. <laughs> but Galaxy has me, so. Zlatan left LA Galaxy after two years in which he was chosen as the player of the year two times. His farewell message, yep, another Ibra masterpiece. I came, I saw, I conquered, you wanted Zlatan, I gave you Zlatan, you are welcome. The story continues, now go back to watch baseball. The King was ready for a final challenge. Zlatan returned to AC Milan for the second half of the 2019-20 season. This time, the Swedish GOAT found the club in a very different situation. He had played in a strong, reliable team, but he was now joining a Milan side that had to put an end to 11 years without a single league trophy. Not many players would have agreed to put their idol status at risk at the age of 38, but Zlatan was not a common player. 
Far from thinking about what he could lose, Ibra saw this as an opportunity to make history one more time. Ibrahimovic had an incredible comeback, scoring 11 goals in 20 games. Still, Juventus won the Scudetto. So the Milan fans were not happy with the team, and that anger increased when in the following season, Inter became Italian champions. Zlatan had scored a brace to win the Milan derby, so his individual performances were out of the question, but a titleless Milan needed a Scudetto to put an end to a decade of frustration. It was time for a last dance, or a last roar for Zlatan. The Swede accepted a diminished role on the field, but he managed to be key during Milan's historical 2021-22 season. Having started in only 11 of the 38 Serie A games, Ibra scored eight goals to take Milan back to the top. 11 years later, Milan won the league and Zlatan became an eternal legend for the fans. After the emotional celebration with his teammates, Zlatan revealed that he had played half of the season with a knee injury and he had to undergo surgery once again. It looked like the end of a stunning career, but you know him, he was not going to retire like that. The Lion fought his way back to the pitch and in March 2023, he became the oldest player to score in Serie A history at the age of 41. 41. Man, I hope to be in such good shape at that age. The King had done it all and announced his retirement after playing just four games that season. An emotional San Siro stadium witnessed the Lions farewell. There are lots of players who made history. Many strikers left a strong legacy as well and a huge amount of footballers play successfully until their 40s. So why will we miss Latan Ibrahimovic so much? First of all, he had an uncanny style of play. His incredible skills were so unusual on a tall, large-sized player like him. Ibra was so much more than a striker. Ibra could dribble past defenders, shoot accurately with both feet, and he had a thing for big games. Secondly, he understood the game on and off the field. So what do we mean by this? Well, Ibra looked like an arrogant man, but as a matter of fact, he just knew that was exactly what his lovers and haters were expecting from him. As great as he was with the ball at his feet, he was the king of mind games when he faced the cameras too. I never heard this question before. I think only you're the one who don't understand. So you should ask like, people who know Zlatan. And you know better football than me? No. So why are you talking? I ask you, do I do, I do my job? Are you a journalist or a camera guy? I am a journalist. So why are you holding the camera? You should have a camera guy, <laughs> no? My, because my boss wants you to meet you. So he's low budget. <laughs> he was a true character and we mean this in all possible ways. Action! This guy could do everything. Of course, his personality brought him some problems as well. We already named a few quarrels from his time at Juventus, but he's had some unforgettable clashes since then. We picked a few, but believe us, the list of players who he stood up against is endless. He dragged Neda Monwoa to the ground by his neck, he threatened Rafael van der Vaart to break his legs while being teammates, and he had a fistfight during a training session in Milan with Aguchi on Yewu, who then burst into tears. You truly don't want to mess with the king. And we didn't even mention his encounters with Romelu Lukaku, Marcos Rojo, and Joey Barton. But as controversial as he may have been, he always stayed true to his beliefs. Remember the time he took his shirt off to show 50 starving people's names on his body? Once more, he showed how generous he is. He knew that even though he had become a king, there were lots of people suffering as he did as a kid. That was the real Zlatan Ibrahimovic. A showman to the cameras, but a feet on earth man. So yeah, we will miss him on the field, and we truly believe that Zlatan will forever be the king of football. How would you rate him in the ranking of the best strikers of the century? Is he in the top 10? Let us know in the comments. And here's a treat to end this video. Have you ever wondered what it would mean to be in Zlatan's shoes? Here's the answer. Enjoy, and thanks for watching.
like a king and left like a legend. In English, point to the